Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is our web information final project, our uh, personal DVD Blu-ray movie web application. Uh, I am Richard Cosmetic, and these are my uh, teammates. We have Ben Below, Andre Flory, and Cynthia Cunningham. Uh, let's get started with our presentation. Um, start with a brief overview of what our project's goals were. Essentially, we want to create a movie management application um, so people can organize their personal movie collections. We also um, needed to get a login system so we could not only have individual users be able to log in, but also to manage their collections um, by themselves. We also uh, wanted to use the Rotten Tomatoes API so that you could um, add <coughs> movies and be able to see what the ratings are and all sorts of uh, good information that uh, most people would want to know. Um, with that, uh, we have uh, we have to show you what we've accomplished in our old architecture in order to get into the new architecture. So if we could go back now. What you're seeing here is our ad interface. Uh, this was in the midpoint presentation, and say we wanted to uh, add a movie like Underworld, which is a pretty good example. Oh, that's way off. Let's keep going. Um, what we can do is essentially we can add movies by simply clicking. And it will show up in here. And go ahead and select that. We, because we uh, eventually moved to the new architecture, we didn't bother um, making this uh, completely readable. But after we add movies, what we're seeing is it will eventually be updated in the cover club. Um, and we could sit there and scroll back and forth and get not only uh, the information for each movie. Uh, but also have some way of displaying not only visually with a picture, but also the text. Um, this was pretty much, uh, we had working behind the scenes was HD access uh, for our login system. It was kind of rudimentary, but it worked pretty well. We also, uh, as you can see, we have the cover flow working. Um, and all this was pretty much static to the point. Um, we uh, also had, well, obviously, search and add. But uh, this is what you're seeing in front of the scenes. Behind the scenes, go ahead and uh, control tabs. Okay. <coughs> um, yeah. Yeah, control tabs. Sorry. There we go. Um, well, you can't see it, but um, Andre and I have both done our uh, individual search functions. His work a lot better, so um, we wound up using his, and mine got converted into an XML generator. So uh, this would not be seen, but as you click each movie, the movie uh, ID is being passed and it's generating the XML behind the scenes uh, for storage and updating the cover flow. The movie, the, once you type in movie name or something, is the movie information picked up from another site or you are right there? Uh, no, it's coming from Rotten Tomatoes. Once we get it in the interface, we click a movie. What's happening behind the scenes would be um, that particular movie would be passed. <laughs> with its movie ID to the, X, uh, the XML generator. Does the Autumn Tomato give you uh, the movie image and all those things also from this API? It gives you a URL to the actual PS link. Yeah. Huh? It gives you a URL to the actual link. Yeah. yeah. It uh, essentially, uh, you can pull out whatever you want. Um, we were going to do it by, as each click, we're going to do the movie ID. What are, you look at this license? Uh, yeah, this was a. Did they allow for that? Yeah, because we had that's a problem. That's why we chose. Yeah, that's why. Originally, we had a problem with IMDb having a legal possible issue. To get away from that, we found Rotten Tomatoes, and they state clearly that it's legal and yeah. free to use. You have to sign up to, <coughs> to access the API to the key. So essentially, that was all um, being done in the background. <coughs> However, we uh, the linchpin was essentially the login system and a way to uh, <coughs> store it under individual accounts. So. Um, with that, we can go back to the slideshow and uh, go on to the next. Um, essentially, the new architecture allowed us, uh, with the CMS, higher integration, and we eventually got to replace uh, XML with MySQL. And a lot of this, the only thing that's really changed is we had uh, all of our code um, was easier to import, you know, import into Drupal, and it gave us the added benefit of login system and the ability to store um, the movie collection is a lot easier. Um, this is essentially um, what we had previously, um, but the integration was a lot tighter and a lot smoother. And with that, we can show you the new architecture. <coughs> and this is essentially a user account creation whereby somebody can uh, log in, create an account, and provide an email address. 
address, and it's somewhat semi-automatic in that um, one of us will get a email and we can confirm that we can <coughs> this user with whatever name they provide. Um, go to the next tab. We already have. How about uh, the passcode store? Say again. How about the passcode store? Inside Drupal. It's a Drupal module and they're, they're stored inside the module. It's using HD access as well, but they have gone through and essentially allowed for sessions, uh, a lot easier logging in. They also have PHP in the HD access so that it can process and you know log in, log out. Um, like I said, we do want to reinvent the wheel, sure. but it used the exact same so technology. Password is only available to a user, right? Correct. Correct. Right. So anyway, uh, Nathan volunteered. We uh, um, once we got everything working, we cleared out. <coughs> go ahead and log in. Now, uh, go to the movie collection, and as you can see. We have nothing in here. We even inform the user of the fact that they have no movies in their database. And what we're going to do is run Nemo, um, <coughs> essentially adding movies to the collection. In this case, let's see, we can do something like Sherlock Holmes. And it does allow for wild cards. The uh, API and uh, the database allow for a slightly fuzzy logic search. So. Um, I think it only um, allows the last character to be something different. So if you're close enough, you'll get the movie. Now, all we have to do is click on a movie. And you'll notice the movie disappears. So you cannot select it again. And it even informs the user that the movie's been added to their collection. But just from the image, you may not be sure. Somebody may look up the metadata because there will be multiple versions of the movies and you want to add a particular We're getting to that. Um, so if you want to be absolutely sure, go ahead and add the second one. So we get a confirmation. Now we go back to our movie collection. <coughs> and we can click on a movie and get essentially uh, <coughs> very pertinent information. It's a runtime, year release, audience critic score. Um, we also, because the uh, JSON data being provided is um, Pretty much for developers, you actually have to pay to get the full, full thing. Um, it not only gives you everything you want it for, but um, audience and critic score and a full synopsis. Now, um, to go to your point, Dr. Shep, uh, if we click on a particular movie, you know, movie information, what it will do is take you directly to Rotten Tomatoes. So if you want further information, um, a lot more than they provide in the actual JSON data, everything's right there and without ever leaving the browser. So you, um, if it has trailers, you can get the trailers and um, things like that. Now if we go back to um, our new interface, right okay. um, <coughs> let's say we don't want to add this movie that we've already added, we can go ahead and click delete. Now we had two movies in our collection. We can confirm that we want to do this. If we go back to our collection, and you notice that the delete button is now disabled. So you can't delete something twice because that would probably cause issues. Go back to our movie collection. There it is. Now, um, we can also uh, go ahead and log out. Okay. And then Cindy's probably got the, the biggest collection. Go ahead and log in. Now, we get our movie collection. It went by kind of fast, but um, when you have a new session, um, we went uh, through this. Can you search your actually, movie collection? Second. Can you search your movie collection? Oh yeah, we're getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> because um, a lot of this is entered in as you enter it, um, we want to be able to find a particular, particular movie. So, um, but what I was going to say is <coughs> as this thing loads up, for the first time you'll actually see it counting and telling you how many movies you have in your collection. What code is this that allows you to kind of see these phases the same way you see it just in your IQ uh, or whatever? Okay, uh, well the cover flow, there's, uh, we actually, uh, Nathan found one uh, for our old architecture. Uh, that was jQuery cover flow for the new architecture. Um, inside of Drupal it is a plugin. Okay. Um, both of them sadly are static. They don't allow for dynamic content, which is exactly what we provided. Uh, through all our coding efforts. Now, um, let's say we want to, we can see some of the movies we have in here, like we go to the search collection. It's like we couldn't see it, 
but we uh, should have Lord of the Rings in there, <coughs> like Lord of and Star. Yeah, eyes will work. You don't have to, but if you want, because if you leave the star off, it'll actually find something with L O R, like Blades of Glory. I believe this in there. Yeah. And sometimes it will find that too. Um, I think yeah, I think I just like Lord last time and found Blades of Glory. The L O R was pretty much part of it. But we can see that we have three Lords of the Rings movies on the presently. So this is essentially what we uh, came up with. Um, not only between the old architecture, pretty much 25% complete, but also the new architecture, and it allowed us to tie everything together. Basically, we're using a JavaScript library that's, that's searching and allows uh, regex searching. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we'll go back to the slideshow. Did we, want to do the, oh, did we want to do another search to essentially? <laughs> and that, yeah, that's the that's the new architecture. So, um, group responsibilities and what we learned. We essentially listed everything we had done, including some of the things that fell by the wayside. There were many um, opportunities for research. Now, I can honestly say that uh, what I had learned, essentially, uh, this class has been awesome. Um, as we got to the completion of this project, you had given us uh, advice to uh, pay attention to the last couple of weeks as the demands on our time would be astounding, and they were. So now half our group uh, had finals before finals week, and the other half has it currently. Um, what I learned or rather relearned is that um, essentially PHP, I've been there since the uh, pre-10 and <coughs> 1.0 days. It's an awesome thing to use, uh, being able to process data very, very easily and quickly. And it's something I've uh, had to get used to again. Also, I've uh, gotten a greater, pre uh, a greater appreciation for my programming skill. I know I've always kind of shied away from it whenever possible. However, um, this class with the first assignment, I had way too much fun. The second assignment was awesome. I also got to teach other people some of the concepts on XML because it was database schema and stuff like that. And I know a few people came to me and asked questions. And, I got to essentially teach what was going on behind the scenes if they didn't understand because at a student level it's different from at a professorial level. And like I said, the third, uh, the third assignment was an extreme challenge for me <coughs> because um, it involved integrating many different ideas all at once and that was you know, something that I kind of racked my brain in. But it provided a perfect um, stage for this final project because it involved essentially all of those ideas that were um, previously in assignments. Now, the uh, I know I kind of grumble and gripe through this, but the, through application of my own skill set and group support, um, this essentially worked out to be a fantastic group to work with, as well as a, uh, a project that came out excellent. And with that, I hand it over to my my associates. Um, as you can see on the table. Um, I worked mostly on the front end in the beginning. I did a little bit of the back end, which was new to me, um, for the last part of this. Um, I got to basically get more experience in XML, HTML, PHP, and all the other technologies we used in this class, which helped me reinforce all that learning that we had done the first part of the semester. Um, I'd also never worked with an open source API like Rotten Tomatoes. That was completely new to me. Um, I learned that, like we said previously, that what they return, the information isn't exactly the best sometimes. It was missing, some of the older movies were missing synopsis and directors and stuff like that. Um, but I thought it was really interesting to see how you could take the information off the API and use it for something like this web application and manipulate it. Um, I have never worked with a CMS or a content management system before. And that was the first time I'd ever seen that. I didn't even know what it was until this project. So that, I think, was an advantage. And you were also me. asked about it. Yeah, I was going to say, I had an interview a few we or a couple weeks ago before we moved to Drupal, and they actually asked me in the interview if I'd ever used a CMS before, and I was like, no, and I didn't even know what it was, and they <coughs> asked about Drupal. So now I feel like, okay, they asked me that in the interview again. I can say, yeah, okay, I've used it. I know what it is now. Good thing. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, I, I thought it was interesting to see what you could do with the content management system as far as taking all our technologies and putting them in, in this sort of framework um, and being able to 
get them all functioning into one web application. I thought that was awesome. So, and I, again, I enjoyed this class. I learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I also learned a lot in this class, and uh, this is probably one of the best classes I've had at Wright State. And I, too, like Cindy, have been looking for a job, and all the job descriptions are listing all these technologies <laughs> in this class. And uh, I learned a lot about PHP, jQuery, JavaScript, and Ajax, and how they interact with each other server-side and client-side things, as well as the content management system, using that tool to harness our code and basically develop a really awesome application. Uh, well, coming into this class, I didn't know anything. <laughs> I didn't know HTML, um, except for maybe a couple things that I had done in my high school and also. Uh, project one was a beast to me. Um, I had a lot of trouble with this that personal website. Project two was pretty hard. And Um, I completed Project 3. I didn't completely understand how I completed Project 3. Um, it wasn't really until this project, or until this final project, that I even understood really the difference between client and server side driving. Um, I, yeah, I had some trouble with that. I primarily focused on some of the front end uh, programming, so like jQuery, JavaScript, and things like that. I had never done that before. Um, I used jQuery on my first project, but I found it online. I didn't understand what was going on. So I understand now, right, though, but... Um, and we have done a lot of paired programming. Just yeah. Because we could swap out to get us like, different skill sets. So. It was nice to, to do things like with some fun. Even if like, that person was like, learning with you, it was nice. So that was, that was one good, good feature of working with the team. This is my first team project to Red State, so I remember that. Um, basically, uh, everything was new to me. I, uh, we used Drupal at work for a few weeks in and I uh, didn't really understand it. It was just a black box to me. I understand it a little bit better now. And uh, maybe there's just not that much to understand. I'm not sure, but it's it's kind of nice. Uh, so if it helps me in that realm, that would be nice. So this project was, it was pretty beneficial, I'd say. Um, yeah. She got asked about that at an interview. Uh, hopefully this gets me a job sometimes. So <laughs> if that's all this ever gets me. But, so. And I think, real quick, if, if we had time, I would li we'd like to show everybody the actual back Good. I think that's we should wrap it up. Uh, I think <coughs> the technologies that you have are today's or uh, possibly yesterday's foundational technology. These are the core of the things that you know majority of the many systems do. So this is fantastic in that sense. <coughs> Remember that if you have to do this area, you have to uh, recognize that this is kind of going to be taken for granted and you need to go a little beyond that. But, but nevertheless, yes, like Google is relatively still, you know, uh, going strong. And there are a lot of other things in your report, for example, that are uh, support for RDF. And uh, uh, the next class, for example, we go into semantics, for example, and that uh, takes you to the next level of the web 3.0 level of things. But anyway. Uh, all these are very cool. Now, uh, talk with those, they like Python more than that. The other technologies are Ruby on Rails and many other things that will be there. Um, but this is foundation. Right? This should always be foundation. And the core thing here is, for me, A, if it is your personal project, this is fantastic experience. Uh, it's really, really critical. B, from where you started to where you went, Learn and can you start feeling comfortable about the uh, <coughs> web technologies and web software applications? Because there's no application being built, it's not web based. Yeah. And, and that's what it's like. We worked on the, the assignments in class and we like muddled through them, and then with this project, it was like, oh wow, well, like, that, well, that's, well. that's that's how things do. It wasn't until the final that we actually uh, integrated everything we had in Drupal because. Uh, like I said, in the old architecture, we had it 95% completed. We had done it all ourselves. So, so to me, if I were to give you a final exam, like a traditional written exam, you would have done almost nothing compared to what you do from the Oh, yeah. So. All right, let's go. Excellent. Good job, man.
So if we use the temporal range selector for this, we can go uh, to last month, and we can filter so that just last months show up. And then again, you can click here. So that's helpful just to see uh, one thing at a time. So that's how the temporal range selector looks. Next, we'll look at the uh, data <coughs> explorer tab. The output on this is a line graph. And again, we'll choose Actic as the drug and Opiophile as the source. We'll choose all the posts again. And then the, the time interval here can be by year or quarter, month or week. We'll go ahead and use month as the default. And then you also have a choice of finding how many posts there were or the users by graph. So, so this lists by month all of the posts on Opio file that mention the Act T. So you'll see there's September and November and all that. So if you go to one of these dots, you'll see that in April 2012, there were six posts. So if you click on this, it takes you back to the Post Explorer tab, which displays those six posts. And then you can find these here. Oh, I forgot to mention the Sentiment Explorer. Um, Revithy worked on the sentiment part of it. And the, the posts are indexed by positive and negative sentiment and also neutral. So you can change this in there too, which would change the line graph. Show me. Show that. Okay, so yeah, if we change it to positive, then they're a little bit different. You now if I click on this graph, I only see the positive posts. Um, these are the posts that have positive sentiment in them. Now they may also have negative, but these are the positive ones. So that will take you back now, over to uh, can you, uh, uh, can you uh, tell me positive with respect to what entity? Or is this something to be done? Well, and I'm just getting to that part here. So if we click on these, you can see that the salmon colored ones, if you click on them, this shows the sentiment that it's assigned to that word. So the word impossible has a negative sentiment. The word worry has a negative sentiment. So everything in the salmon colored is negative, and the positive sentiment is colored in green. Uh, awesome, or easily. No, no, that's fine. The issue is to be, uh, it should be target specific sentiment, meaning that is it a positive for, let's say, a drug, or a positive for a method of acquiring drug, or whatever. So for example, there is no pre Okay. I, I got a question from Michelle. So the way we are doing sentiment analysis right now, it is uh, for each sentence we identify, we try to identify a drug in that sentence and all the sentiments associated in that, uh, all the sentiments identified, identified in that sentence are assumed to be associated to that drug. So if, if you it's not, know, it's not, uh, it's not that sentence, easy. Uh, it's not that uh, uh, easy as well as uh, uh, Lou has done specific work on that area. Um, my question is, is Lou's work indicated here, which is target specific yes. sentiment analysis? Right, it is target uh, specific. So what we are looking at is the way we have used the algorithm here is we are splitting the post, we are passing the post based on individual sentences, and then we are identifying the drug name based on the dictionary that we have, and then we are sending this as input to this algorithm, so it identifies the sentiments associated with that target in the sentence. Right, so what, where, here's what I'm trying to get to. Uh, from the end user perspective, uh, I would like to know that from this day to day, the, the other day, a day A to B, for all the posts there, tell me uh, a rank, uh, you know, rank order things that have had the most positive sentiment, take, tell me on the rank order the things, top, you know, themes, topics, right. entities that are the most so, negative sentiment. And um, essentially, if I plot the um, change in the sentiment on a topic, then I know that there is a huge um, a change uh, with regards to sentiments on a particular reformulation of a drug, and I can immediately understand what's happening in the world. Absolutely. That would be like the next uh, piece of work that we would work on. Um, right now, what it does is I identify sentiments within a post. The next thing, this is something that I'd like to do uh, with and discuss about with her, that um, the next thing that we have to work on is to uh, identify the sentiments associated with each drug, like uh, <coughs> all our data together to identify associated with particular drugs. What we have right now is drugs associated with, uh, the sentiments associated with posts. Okay, fine, 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 fine.
it's mostly the drug names. So that's why they're highlighted in yellow. So that's the way the sentiment works. And next we'll look at being able to choose multiple drugs and multiple data sources. So we'll go ahead and clear this and use a different so, search. So uh, in terms of time, show me the most important thing. We can skip, uh, you know, minor details. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and pick buprenorphine. Uh, choose all three of the um, sources, and we'll go ahead and leave those as the default. So this graphs everything, and um, it's easy to nice. manipulate because you can just click here and see yeah. what you have, you know, if you're yeah. wanting to look at a particular one. Sure. So then, again, you can come here and click this and come back and it lists all the posts here of the sentiments and you'll see that they include So the now two. in this particular case the idea here is that what is common between all of these posts? So there was that P. Yes. And uh, is there a correlation between all these posts? Are they talking about, not just now, right now you can tell that uh, indeed um, uh, there is a peak a lot of people are talking about on this day. <laughs> Now, I want to know, are they talking about the same thing on this day? Is there some correlation, some new thing that has happened? Or they are just, just happens to be talking about different things on the same day, people just got busy. It's a, it's a Friday evening or Saturday and they, they, they use this more often and it's a regular occurrence. Um, and I know that this may be the next step, so uh, right. you know, uh, this may not be done yet, but that, that's what would allow people to discover it. Right. And the important part here is that you can look at having both drugs in the same post. So if you oh, want okay. to see if there's nice. a connection, right. you can do that. And then if you carry it one step further over here, the faceted search part, you can also include a word such as withdrawal yeah. to see if there's any uh, posts that include those two terms plus the word withdrawal. The moment <coughs> this post that you had earlier. Right, okay. just from the um, perfect, filtered perfect, post. Perfect. And then you'll see that there are, um, and you can do a find down here. I've got the word withdrawal here, and you can find it quickly by doing that. If you go up here and then click down here, it shows you where all the words withdrawal are. So that's the important part about that, that you can actually search on the terms, as many terms as you want. I just chose two drugs, but you can have three, four, five, however many you want. And then if you want to uh, search only the posts with no drugs necessarily, you can search in a word, for example, hallucination. And this is going to search all forums with all the drugs and um, bring up the posts here. And Hallucination is a sentiment word, so it's going to be... So the point here is now, I would like to know which drug um, uh, un in the, uh, was hallucinated used most often be. That is the yes. Right, and it doesn't bring up all of them, I don't believe, because there's only 22 listed here. Okay. It ranks them and brings up the most relevant. Um, and uh, because of the work that we've done, uh, there's already been advances in what the researchers found. Um, the, we presented the program that I just demoed for you to the CITAR researchers about two weeks ago, a week and a half or two weeks ago, and since then they've even found chatter about a different way that buprenorphine has been used. So just from this project, it's already had uh, validated results. And if you guys want to um, play around with it or search anything or do your own research, you're more than welcome to go ahead and go in there. The, um, if you go to this website, you can log in as a guest. The username is guest and the password is guest and you can um, find the different things that you want. Um, the one thing I forgot to tell you is that at the top of one of them, if you want to click on that, it takes you directly to the uh, post of the uh, forum. So you can see it 